for like months afterwards. I had this like numbness in my head, and I thought that I had had a brain injury. And、um, this was really traumatizing to my sense of self because I I've conceived of myself throughout my life as as my intellect and my brain is my like salient. Part. Yeah. And so to have this this fear of like oh I've screwed it up I I damaged the best part of me like all of my potential is now squandered and gone. I mean, Gustav Von has been killing it for a long time, man. She's so good. Anyways, Anyways. <laughs> good welcome to I'm Trying, the show where we try our best and we don't succeed, but then sometimes we do, and we get what we want and what we need. Are we just using this last week's same? No, there was a remix on oh, okay. it. Okay, we do a remix. Oh, that's that's the Jacob Scratch. Yep, there you go. <laughs> DJ, DJ, JD. JD. What's your name? Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> you <have to> oh, <laughs> I'm like, what are we waiting for? That's you, another Gwen Stefani you song. Have to introduce yourself. What you waiting? What you waiting for? My name's Janelle Dennis. I'm Jacob Derwin. Thank you very much for joining us for episode eight. Eight. Just like. It is great.、Uh, we're so glad you're here. This is already off the rails. Uh, uh, you are joining us.、Uh, you say that every single time too. Yeah, because we're off the rails all the time.、Yeah. We're 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 crazy, man. We're we're we're, we're comics unleashed. One a.m. CBS. Let's go. Anyways,、uh, today's episode is with the、uh, wonderful, kind, sweet, intelligent,、uh, generous with his time, Stephen Fishback.、Um, yeah. Who uh, I uh, have admired for an extensive amount of time. I don't think he's a real person, to、he's, be honest. Why is that? He's just not. He he's a he's a he's an android. Like he's a bot come to life. He's a bot. A bot. <laughs> I don't know if you'd appreciate being called a bot. Yeah, because a bot is you know what. Like a customer service bot, they're the most friendly ones. Uh huh. There's a big thing in the Survivor fan community is people get called game bots. Sometimes. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, some people like it's it's like、uh, they、uh, you know people who are so focused on the strategy and the game of it that they don't. That would be a compliment to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's for, to people it's like a way of saying like they're not they're not friendly they're unfeeling they don't have empathy for the other players.、Oh. Um, it, 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 I think it has. Aren't, aren't, you know. Isn't the whole point of these games like I'm not here to make friends no, I'm here to、so. win. Oh,、well, you need to、e、make friends. Every、win. reality TV show, there's always someone that says. Well, that. no, that well, it comes from Survivor. It was、yeah. Kelly Wigglesworth, season one. She Kelly said, Wigglesworth. Kelly Wigglesworth, the runner-up of season one, is the person who said that, and it's become canon in like television. So, oh God, the mic's falling. <laughs>、um, so that's where. I'm not here to make friends. That's that's literally where it comes from. So、um, I like to say that in every meeting meet meetup that I show up to.、Mm -hmm. I'm not here to make friends. Yeah,、um, yeah. I mean, it's funny. It is funny.、Um, but yeah,、High、so high school like, reunion. I'm not here to make friends, but we <laughs> are your friends. I'm here to lose them. <laughs> I need the money. There is no、Shut、money, Shelley. <laughs> I just want to make it clear that not every episode. I know we've had two. This is our second Survivor guest、uh, in the first ten episodes, and I just want to say out loud that this is not a Survivor show, but.、Um, The to get on a show like that, you have to、uh, oftentimes be interesting. You have、yeah. to have an interesting life and an interesting or an interesting career or a, an interesting personality. And so, by being a part of this little thing, I've managed to meet, I've managed to meet a lot of really interesting,、uh, delightful people,、uh, and Stephen included. So that's why he's here,、uh, not just because of Survivor, because he's a fantastic writer with an awesome podcast、yeah. called Paraphrase. Um, he's just a kind, good guy, and he was nice to talk to. Man, also, like, I don't know why people are so embarrassed about reality TV. Like, he's he's not, right? Yeah, I don't think he is.、Um, but a lot of I've seen a lot of contestants from other shows. They're like, I don't want to be associated with that, and I understand. But、uh, what I'm trying to get at is, I'm hoping that one day we can have a guest from. <laughs> Bad Girls Club, or <laughs> Flavor of Love, or I Love New York,、mm -hmm. or I Love New York Two, Two. or Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs>、um, I'm sure we will. Look, I mean, 
No, reality. They won't. <laughs> I, you never know, man. Reality television's a funny thing because at the end of the day, people who That's are the kind of those are the kind of shows that I watch where there's I, fights. I assure you that if if these people are on reality shows, they would have nothing wrong going on a podcast to talk about themselves. <laughs> There was an event uh, this past weekend uh, at a club in New York City run by Andrea Belke. Excuse me. Am I going to leave that in? You can, yeah, but now there's this, this weird silence. I'm, I, I want to milk the silence. <laughs> you need to put in some in sound effects or something. Like a burp and then a That bow. burp is just going to be like echoing for like two <laughs> seconds. Um, so Andrea Belke, who's a friend of our show, she's been on the show, and uh, Meg Malley from Big Brother um, do a thing every year uh, for the past couple of years where they do a, a Survivor Big Brother reality show person meet and greet, like a club, they'll, they'll rent out a space. Like a reunion. Well, no, 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 it's a, it's a charity fundraiser. So fans will oh, okay. fan, nice. fans can buy a ticket to come to come hang out in this like in a space with all these people and mingle with all their favorite reality show people. Um, and so this this past weekend it was at Slate uh, in Manhattan. I know Slate. Yeah, I've been I, there a few times. There you go. It's a, it's an interesting venue. And mm-hmm. um, uh, I went. I, I wasn't really planning on going because I, I sometimes get a little bit awkward at these events because I'm not really good at the whole club bar thing. And also like I feel a little weird when it's like look at all these like mega all-stars from all these shows where like four-time players and champions and like they, they've made they've built a career off and then I, hi i'm here too it's kind of it's a little weird uh hey remember me yeah no that's how it feels right and so uh, i went but i didn't that's why you gotta milk it <laughs> you just gotta like change your whole entire personality and it's come hard as a man. pro wrestler and be like mm-hmm. oh you thought you knew jacob <laughs> sunday sunday that's monster you show sucks. up there's just um, like dry ice machine in the corner <laughs> Um, I go by Derwin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll show you. A, I'll show you a quick picture. Just, just, I think it perfectly illustrates my my time there. Um, the listeners can't see the picture. I'll, I'll put a link to it. Okay. Um, so it's a series of pictures, actually, in particular. I know I turned it to the rock for a second. The listeners can't see the picture. <laughs> uh, point is, it's a cool event, and so I ended up going, and it was really, really lovely because I got to meet and mingle with a lot of fans and mm. stuff, and even meet some alums from the show who I had met before who I admire. Yeah. And I had this moment um, towards the end of it where uh, there's a, there was a person on a show on the show um, a long time ago. Her name's Courtney, and, and Courtney uh, was I, I was twelve. When she appeared on the show for the first time. Whoa. I was 12 when she appeared on the show. It was 2007. Uh, Survivor China. And Courtney Yates is iconic from the show. She's her Everything about her. She's sarcastic and I hilarious. I so old. <laughs> I'm sorry. But continue. I'm sorry. Uh, she's, she's wonderful. She's hilarious. She's, she's sharp. Uh, she does not give a damn about what you think about her. I've always admired her. Um, and she's been... I- Iconic's a weird word to use, but in- at least in terms of Survivor, I-, I think definitely one of the most notable people who's been on the show. Mm-hmm. And so I've met her two or three times now, and we've talked a little bit here and there. And I had this moment at the end of the night when I was getting ready to say goodbye, where I said goodbye to Courtney. And it's okay if Courtney hears this. I told her this already. And I was saying goodbye to her, and I realized like we were hugging, and I literally like looked at her, and my first thought was, and I said it out loud, I said, this is weird. Do you know how weird this is? This is weird. And she goes like, this, "What do you mean? It's not weird." And I'm just like looking at her like, "No, no, 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 no! You don't realize I've like been a fan of yours and admired you for over ten years." So it's weird for you. It's weird for me, not for her. It's it's the the feeling of 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 getting the same reaction out of people, everyday pe- people who watch the show, that somebody who you've admired on the show gets. The fact that there are fans who came up to me and were like freaked out and were like excited and also kind of like scared to meet me and meanwhile i'm planning a picnic with someone i admired from the show who i've known basically not known but known of for a decade it was this crazy moment and she's so super chill about it and so relaxed about it and but inside me i'm like i'm just like how is this real it's a weird that's how thing. life works it's it's have you had that moment where you had someone you admired or it could be it could be a, com- a comedian, an actor, a business thing, yeah, whatever. Yeah, a bunch of people. But I feel like that's mm-hmm. very yeah. You when you're entrenched in mm-hmm. a community, it's just natural. You're mm-hmm. going to. It's just something. Meet it's them. something. Anyways, this picture. Um, there was a photographer going around that night. I think this picture perfectly illustrates my uh, approach to clubs and bars. Um, this is a picture of Meg, 
who helped run the event for Big Brother and her family. It's a very, it's a very sweet picture. I'll zoom in on them a little bit. Um, it's a very sweet picture. They're posing. Uh, and if you look closely in the background, if you zoom in a couple times, <laughs> you can see me background. sitting on my phone in the back room getting a breather from all the people for a few minutes and I just happen to be behind the You look the like you're looking right at the camera though. Like you're trying to I must have seen the flash and looked at the exact right moment because like... <laughs> you look like the Dos Equis man. Like a younger version. Stay thirsty, my friend. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to share that picture. <laughs> but yeah, so it was a really cool event and I'm really glad I went because I was, I was apprehensive about going. It was nice to like do that again and like just meet people and that people. picture reminds me very much of Robin. The I'm in the corner <laughs> watching you, cancer. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, our guest Stephen today is um, a Survivor alum. Uh, that's that's probably where most people know him from. But he also does a podcast with Rob Sesternino about the show every week. Mm. Uh, he writes for People Magazine, and most notably, the thing I'm excited about, uh, he started a podcast called Paraphrase, where he talks yes. to authors about their novels about their books uh and how they started as writers and how the book got started and these are not like small potatoes we're talking some pretty big names some pretty well acclaimed authors um uh books that you know if you go to barnes and noble and ask if they have it they've been sold out for weeks Hmm. like these are these are he's got he's getting some pretty high profile people so if you're a literature fan if you're into the new modern works like this is a really specific, like, this podcast plays specifically into your interests, and uh, I've listened to, I think, all the episodes so far, and they've all been really, really great. Yeah. I mean, he, and he, he dressed up for the interview, which was, you know. I think he had an event after. Really nice. Oh, I thought he dressed up for us. <laughs> wow. You didn't need to blow his cover like that. I thought you guys, I thought you... Steven, see, see like the type of people that you think you you think you have someone's back and then they don't. I just want you to know that if I knew that you were dressing up for another event, I would have never brought that up. I would have taken that to the grave. Just putting it out there. I still appreciate where the loyalty it. lies. I was wearing probably jeans and a t-shirt, so I appreciate yeah. it. Still, anyways. Anyways, it was a very special, momentous occasion for which he wore a tie <laughs> just for us. Oh, thank you, thank you, Stephen, for coming on, and I hope you guys uh, enjoy the episode with the wonderful Stephen. As my mind often does, you know, I was just I flash back to this moment um, in in Cambodia, in Survivor Cambodia, in in Cambodia, Survivor Thirty One, Second Chance. I was that was my second time playing on on the show. My first time playing, I did I did really well. And I was the runner up on the, on the season and I felt like I was really well represented in the show's story that they, that they aired about me. Uh, and I went back with the second time, you know, thinking like, I want to do more. I want to do better, but not ever having the sense that I might really embarrass myself. Um, and yeah, why would you think that you killed it the first time? Well, right. You know, you always are aware of the possibility that you'll embarrass yourself, but you know, you, you kind of have an idea of, you know, when you're going out there, you're think you have this sort of vision of yourself, like operating as your best self. And when I went out my first time, I was 29 years old. Um, I was decently comfortable with my life, but at 35, when I went out for my second time, or 36, however old I was, I felt really comfortable with myself. You know, I was mm. I was uh, an executive at MTV. Um, I had you know a staff that worked for me. I felt like a successful guy, yeah. uh, very self assured. You know, and and. Um, so I thought, I'm going to step onto that beach and I'm going to be, you know, my self-assured self. And, you know, I'm not going to be the alpha guy. I'm not going to be the, the jock or the super, you know, I'm not going to be able to build the shelter, but I'm going to be confident. I'm going to be able to engage with people. I mean, you know, my first time out, I was really nervous meeting people from different uh, backgrounds from me and, and it proved to not be a challenge. And so the second time I thought, well, that, that was not a challenge the first time. You know, it won't be a challenge now. And it was hard. Uh, you know, I immediately uh. didn't gel with the people around me, which put me on my back foot. Uh, I found myself scrambling around, you know, trying to make inroads into this group of people and really reverting very quickly back to my, you know, all of my high school insecurities in this crazy way, which was like shocking to me. It was almost like interesting from a sociological perspective. Like mm-hmm. as it was happening to me, I was also observing it. I was like, I am this like, 
confident mid thirties guy in my daily life. Why am I now an insecure teen? You know, in this moment <laughs> when it really, really, really matters the most <laughs> that I be yeah. confident. You know, what what did teen Stephen look like? I mean, he was like gangly. His limbs yeah. were all over the place. You know, like he didn't have like control of his body. You know, he, he just like. Uh, you know, uncomfortable around the jocks, you know, and, and it's crazy just how I, I honestly like, I mean, what do you think, Jacob? Like, yeah. why, why does it happen? Like, why, I mean, did you have a similar experience where you felt I like had you were the regressing? Exact same experience, except <laughs> I didn't bounce back from it. That's really, that's really it. You didn't, I, they didn't give you a second chance. No, 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 what, <laughs> well, uh, honestly, like, uh, um, what you just described is literally what happened to me. So like it's wow. it's it's very literal, and, and and maybe that's just the experience of of the type of us who gets cast. I don't know on this show, um, but it for me, I never bounced back. I never had that moment to recover. And Steven still he's, he's you're underselling it a bit. You still went pretty far in the second season. Obviously, mm-hmm. you didn't come in second place again, but you you still did really well. You made the merge. You played. You made moves. Um, but the. I don't know why it happens. I think I think it might be, and, I, and this is maybe giving me too much credit, it might be because a lot of the people who go out there and that we're around with uh, have thrived from that mentality. If you're surrounded by people who are still kind of playing the high school game because it's always worked for them, right. mm. and you're not playing it anymore because it does not work for you <laughs> yeah. remotely, like like ourselves, yeah. it, it, it kind of becomes hard to fight what everyone else is doing. It's it's a whole different. When I look, I didn't play with Savage and Jeremy like that. I don't know how they are. I've never met them, but um, I'd imagine you know it, it can't be that dissimilar from when I played with you know Brendan and Michael. Right. So, uh, yeah. And, and, you know, I, I really could have had a similar experience to you had I been on a group that lost repeatedly. Yep. You know, like if I had been in your, <laughs> on your, on your group, I might have been, uh, Eliminated, you know, just where, just where you were, and not had that chance to find my footing. And then I would have happily, well, I mean, I, we all have, we all have our regrets. So what ultimately, though, to me was my most embarrassing moment, and also one of the most challenging moments in my life, yeah. was a couple of weeks later, uh, we had this monsoon in Cambodia, and oh. it was it just dumped on us nonstop for days on end, and you know we couldn't cook because we didn't have fire. You know, all I had eat, I, all I ate for. Three days was, I think, a single olive and like a few handfuls of what? like dried rice. Um, and the other thing is that when you, it's dumping like that, you're also not getting water because the water source is decently far away from your shelter. So you're not, uh, you know, you're not going out to to find that water, and as a result, you become super dehydrated. Well, I became really sick, and that sickness. So, I, so in the in this in the middle of this monsoon, while everyone around me is, you know, we're all weeping, we're crying, we're huddled together. I had to run from the shelter. And be sick in the woods. Uh, and I will, and I, and before I left the shelter, I would always, I'd like strip off my clothes because, you know, if I got drenched, they weren't getting dry. There was no way to dry my clothes. Oh, so I God. was, I was, you know, therefore like literally like naked, sick in the middle of a monsoon in, in, and this, you know, island of in Cambodia. And I felt like this is as low as I can possibly go. You know, I mean, physically, you know, certainly <laughs> we all have emotional lows and we, you know, Family losses are are greater than being you know sick in the rain on a, on a TV show, but um, you know just I was so beaten down, and then to have that moment, which which in some ways it was kind of a it was some ways it was sort of like an empowering moment because it's I was cathartic so, in a way. Well, yeah, I was like so low, and like I had like nothing left to give. Like you know certainly from my guts, they were all over the uh, you know. <laughs> 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 um, uh, and I, I was like, you know what? But I, I can still continue. I can still push forward. You know, I'm totally. I have nothing left physically. I'm completely, you know, exhausted. And yet, I can still move forward through time. I can still progress forward in this game. And so, even as I was at that incredible low, to have that experience of, and yet I can persist was, um, or uh, you know, yet I through my will power I can go on was very. Uh, powerful for me. You know, it was very, uh, inspiring for me, just in, in from my own perspective. And the, pro- the, the challenge was then, you know, then when that airs on television, suddenly it's like, you've got the people, you know, sniping about, oh, look at him, he's sick out in the rain, and you know, you have people like laughing at you, you know, edited in, and your yeah. low moment is sort of played for laughs to a certain yeah. degree. I mean, it's also played for tragedy and real human emotion. And then the people online are like talking about you, and you know, and it becomes, so this moment that is both really deeply uh, it was it was a personal low? It was a personal high. Becomes a subject 
for other people, you know, to comment on, you know, many people express sympathy, many people express support. In fact, the vast majority of people express a lot of love, 99% love, but then you have this 1% of people who are just throwing vile and, and negativity at you and hostility. And, and, and where are they throwing this at you on Twitter? Yeah, or? social media, mostly Twitter, I would say. Yeah. Um, you know, a little, some Facebook, you know, some, some Reddit, but you know, you can, you, oh, Reddit. But if you go to, if you go to Facebook. some place that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you, if you, I feel like even like for Reddit, like if you go on Reddit, if you go on, on Facebook, like you're seeking it out to a certain yeah. degree. With Twitter, it like comes at you in a way that you can't really control when somebody's at tagging you with their hostile thoughts. Um, obviously you can just stay off Twitter, which is what I do more and more. But, but, uh, you know, it's, it's the, the level it, to not, to, to have that. And it, I don't know, there's, it seems so trivial, you know, when you hear about it from someone else or when you hear about it before experiencing it yourself to have all of this hostility and negativity. You're like, whatever. It's like some stranger tweeting at you like this person isn't happy with their life or, or whatever. Um, but then when you receive it, when you receive that negativity and it's personal, it's directed and it's, you know, it's the ju- and it feels like the judging eyes of the world are upon you. You know, it, it becomes very raw and very, um, uh, you know, you feel very vulnerable and exposed. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was, I was, I admired you in that moment because I remember at some point, maybe I don't remember how many days later, you go, you, you know, the tribe shows up for some challenge and the rain had stopped and you cracked a joke about it. Right. Which became its own, which be, I don't know if it was actually hashtagged, but like. Uh, it was not hashtag on the show, but now I will never live it down. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, no, no, I, no, but it was yeah. amazing. What's it, the hashtag? It was gastrointestinal distress. Severe gastrointestinal Severe. distress. Severe <laughs> gastrointestinal yeah. distress. And like. I, I, I admire that so much because I can tell, I mean, from the way you're talking about it now and how it must have felt in the moment, like, this is a painful experience. Yeah. And the fact that you were able to at least acknowledge it and crack a joke about it and smile at it, even though it was that terrible, not when you got home, not after the episode aired, but right after the moment, I think that's the most important thing. Well, I, I, I mean, that's a nice way of looking at it. You know, it, it does sort of seem like it's the kind of thing where you there's no option but but to laugh about Absolutely. it. You know, it's so ridiculous that you're like, well, this is this is absurd. And it, it, it's you know, it's hard. You know, you, you do try, or one does try to, as you're experiencing lows, to also kind of step outside of them and say like, this is interesting, or you know, this is funny, or this is like, what well, what an absurd experience I'm having right now. And and even with some of the Twitter negativity, it's like. What a, what a what a fascinating thing to go through, you know, yeah. to have like strangers attacking you online. Like, what a, what an interesting thing that that that's happening now. It's, yeah. it's a unique thing for our generation. But at really the same is. time, you yeah. have the the opposite side of that. You have those people like leave Stephen alone. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's only eating an olive. Yeah. Well, it's yeah exactly. Well, that I mean, it is true though that the, the vast majority of people. Um, do are just so nice and supportive and so loving but it's like you know you can hear it's like that one thing you're like but that guy he said something nasty about me like you know it's like all of those wonderful comments as meaningful as they are just become background noise that like one negative thing that you fixate on and i mean i I don't know what's the solution it's like mindfulness do you just meditate to like let it go (laughs) do you meditate I, sometimes i try remembering who you are yeah exactly yeah something like that yeah something like that Uh, you just got married. I did. Yeah. Well, well you know, this is a podcast about uh, disasters. This is from the marriage for me. It's been a, a huge success. Uh, well, that's uh, great. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I was going to ask if leading up to this moment, if there were any kind of disastrous stories in the dating series, if you'd like to bring that up, you don't have to. Oh, gosh. I we, mean, we've, I, we've noticed a trend in our recent guests that there's a lot of stories about these things. There was a, our yeah. last interview was a man who called off two weddings, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Um, I, you know what? Like, I just can, I, I hate to be a dead guest, but like, I, I, I just, you know, I don't like to talk about the, you know, I, 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 I feel no, very I lucky. I feel like all of those, all of those failures led me to a, a good, a good situation. Good. Um, okay, good. That's, and, that's and uh, about it. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, well, I, you know, I feel like there, you know, there were so many. Like, how, how does one, how does one, uh, you know. You know <laughs> I just want to point out for everyone at home that Janelle is eating a slice of pepperoni pizza and trying to keep her head away from the microphone. I don't know why the lights just. Because I'm a professional, Jacob. It looks and smells delicious. Oh, it's mm. a, it's a, it's a motion sensor. Okay. Mm-hmm. I understand oh. now. All right. Anyway. There's a lot happening right now. No. Okay. Well, then let's go back to Survivor for a minute. So, like, uh, obviously this was kind of a colossal thing. Uh, I'm wondering how you felt back after Token Teens. How many years ago was that now? That was 10 years. And it was interesting because yeah. you know, we just had our 10-year anniversary for that wow. for that season, which was at the time it felt like, 
really latter-day survivor. You know, this was 2009. The show had been on for 18 seasons. Yeah. It felt like we were, uh, you know, the show had been going on forever. Um, and now it's like, you know, we're, we're heading, the show's heading into its 38th season. Like, yeah. Token Chains was the first half of the show, which was just, it boggles, it blows yeah, my mind. Yeah. But, but it is,